I'm Lorraine Sommerfeld and this is the Lemonade Car Show. Tonight we're talking about Onvik and as always we'll be answering all of your car related questions. Lemonade is brought to you by Onvik, that's Ontario's vehicle sales regulator and we're produced by the Automobile Protection Association. The APA fights for you, the consumer, and provides information and news on all parts of the industry. Visit our website at apa.ca or reach us by phone at 416-204-1444. Joining me today is John Raymond. He's an industry consultant and APA advisor, and Terry O'Keefe. He's the director of communications with Onvik. We'll also be taking your calls this evening at 800-968-7836. Welcome back, Terry. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Hi, John. Nice to be on set, not pointing off set at me. As we're yelling, <laughs> yeah. call John, call, call John. John. Yeah, exactly. call John. Before we get going into some Onvik stuff, which I really like doing because it's great consumer protection news, a lot of stuff going on today with Takata, of course, Who and else? airbags, yes. Um, what's the latest? The latest, and it's not confirmed yet because I've heard different reports, but what I've heard is that the U.S. government, through one of their agencies, will allow uh, vehicle manufacturers to sell their vehicles even though they know that uh, recall will be required because these cars are piling up and uh, they have to be sold one way or another. The, because I think the last count was 69 million, million last week. Yeah, worldwide, not just here. So it is virtually almost every car. Well, I know well, every week they're adding two, three hundred thousand more cars. So they can't just embargo all these cars and have them sitting there because there's already Volkswagen. I think the that's air. the that's the point, and I probably it's also going to be by state mm -hmm. because most of the issues uh, have occurred in southern states where uh, hot temperature, high humidity. So if I go and buy a car tomorrow and it's new, is there a chance it could have a recalled airbag in it? Uh, very possible. Well, according to the last report, where there were a number of cars, including the Volkswagen Passat CC, which is the model that's manufactured in Germany, <laughs> um, that has a Takata airbag that needs a recall, and that is for sale in Canada. So, And when they keep adding to it, you don't always no, like a month down the road, you can go, my new car now has this recall on it. And I think they're saying in Canada, uh, we're up to a year, year and a half out from getting them all replaced because they can't produce them. Yeah, I think there's enough. certain things that we should keep in mind. Recalls, number one, are good. Mm -hmm. That manufacturers are going back with their suppliers to repair deficiencies, especially mm -hmm. if they're dangerous in nature. Mm -hmm. And number two, that there hasn't been a Takata implosion or explosion like they've had in the US with shrapnel and things like that. So we are very fortunate that we live in a cold climate and uh, yeah, not the, the same right kind of humidity. So. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. would I purchase a car that needed uh, airbag replacement? Um, George I would said he would. Yeah, George said he would. I would, I don't know, I'm still on the fence. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Yeah. I think that's an important point that John's making is that it might be a material fact to John. Mm -hmm that he wouldn't buy that car if it had a, an outstanding safety recall. and then, So a year ago, OMVIC actually issued a bulletin to all 8,000 dealers in Ontario telling them that if they had vehicles for sale that had outstanding safety recalls, that we considered that a material fact and therefore it needed to be disclosed to the consumer. Mm -hmm. The dealer could certainly sell it, but they needed to disclose to the consumer the outstanding safety recall so that the consumer, you know, if, it right. might matter to John, yeah. it might, he, and that, that consumer might go, you know what? No, I'm not willing to, to take that 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 risk. We've but had Terry, are they doing that? All I can tell you is we've given that direction to them. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't identified it as an issue of non-compliance in in our inspections program, uh, but I certainly can't guarantee that it's happening at every store. Right. So by reference, what we're talking about is when a, a new or a used car dealer takes a car in trade in or has a used car that they bought at the auction, mm -hmm. they would have to go into online to either the manufacturer's website or global website like Transport Canada and look up the recall notices on open. each and every car mm -hmm. and presumably print them up mm -hmm. and add them to the documentation, mm -hmm. disclose them to the clients. So if you have a super sized used car lot with four or three or four hundred cars, could you imagine all the work? And what happens if you're... They don't do it. Um, yeah, they, they, A, they don't, they do, don't it. do it. But uh, B is, do you, if the car's sitting in stock for 60 or 90 days, do you do it every 30 days? Maybe there wasn't, a, like, these recalls are coming out every month. I mean, they're tumbling Every in. week. And yeah. we've, we've talked before, Terry, about what's material and what's not, because mm -hmm. what 
you know, we, I think we had a call, there was $2,500 damage that hadn't been disclosed, and two of us went, eh, that's a paint smudge, you know, on most cars these days. And you were quick to say, look. If it's a brand new car, yeah. that would be material to me. Yeah, and even if it's been in a collision, though, people have a right to know that, and it's not so much an absolute dollar amount, even though I know you do legislate one, but what matters to one person, why not? Like, I, I know my I sister. Think, so the, there's a legal test. Yeah. It's, it, it's, a, it's the test, is it's, it's a reasonable consumer. Might it affect a reasonable consumer's decision to either purchase the vehicle or purchase it for that price? Mm -hmm. If it might, then it's a material fact. The thing too is Transport Canada has all the recalls listed. So you could technically, if you're standing in a car lot looking at a car, you could run the VIN number, which you can see through the dash on the driver's side. You could run it yourself through tan Transport Canada. It might take you a bit on your iPhone, but you right. could do it. And so I think as a consumer, if you want to protect your butt a little bit, do that yourself. Take it upon but yourself because the dealers aren't doing it. But there's also uh, technical service bulletins called TSBs mm -hmm. that are also important. Uh, mm -hmm. BMW has a system called Puma where they'll update people's cars based on a number of these technical service bulletins mm -hmm. most consumers don't know. But about the $2,500, I think for a consumer purchasing a car, uh, everything is material. Mm -hmm. uh, legally, the $2,500 is... Well, the 3000 is the, the legal limit. definition yeah. of what has to be disclosed as far as previous accident collision. Uh, but if it was less than 3000 if it was $2,500, if that's a... 12 year old car with 260,000 kilometers on it? Is it a material fact that 10 years ago mm -hmm. it had a hit for 2,500? No. Probably not. But if it's a brand new car and I get to pick one that's got, you know, factory paint and one that's been fixed up because it got hit on the lot or $2,500 damage, I'll take the brand new one, please. That's a material fact at that point in time. And it's also education, as Terry said. No. You know, it could be a blemish on the car or something else. And in truth, the majority of new cars somewhere in the distribution system get damaged. Okay, what does that mean? It could be a discoloration of a, a bumper or fender because of that white plastic that you see on cars in mm -hmm. transport. It could be a scratch because as we all know, these dealerships are so crowded, it's hard to maneuver the cars around. My kid has worked at several dealers and hypothetically one once upon a time, um, dent in the hood, nobody owned up. They, of course, blame the guys at the back, and they're going, we didn't do it. There's nothing we could have hit with this. That car was sold. It had, it had already been sold. What's the obligation of the dealership? What's the duty do they have? Because if I go get it fixed, it might be 3000 bucks to fix that. If they do it themselves at their body shop, does that let them skirt? A recent discipline decision would say no. Uh, OMVIC has three different tools that we can use when we find you know, issues of non-compliance with the Motor Vehicle Dealers Act. Uh, we can charge the dealership and they go to court. We can discipline the dealership for breaching the code of ethics, or we can take administrative action, the worst of course being the rev revocation of their license. Um, in a recent discipline hearing, uh, exactly that type of thing came up where the the history report might have said the damage was $8,000, but the dealership claimed, well, we repaired it for less than 3000 so we didn't yeah. have to disclose it. And the discipline panel said, whether or not that's the case, if it was an $8,000 repair someplace else, that's a material fact that mm -hmm. should and needed to be disclosed to the consumer. What are dealers supposed to do when it's something between a scratch or a discoloration? What's okay to fix and let go what's not is it that three thousand dollars or like if i buy a car like i know if my sister buys a new car that car would better be absolutely pristine because she'll be, i'm more likely to go eh, i want to keep it for a couple of years probably so it'll go so what's the obligation so what like, should a good dealership do yeah a good dealership should get an estimate keep that in the file mm -hmm. i.e an estimate um a consumer estimate and let the person why, know why not disclose it if, yeah. if you're saying I don't want to disclose it because you think it might affect their decision to buy the car mm -hmm. then you've already answered the question if it's material or not well, if you're concerned if about already... disclosing it and they might not buy the car yeah. then it's a material fact so you already know and when I operated dealerships we would always take pictures yeah so we would put it in perspective and yeah. it's it's good to disclose it's good business it, it, it is good business and it builds trust Absolutely. It, builds, it builds trust. I think they're more worried that someone's supposed to show up. They know they're picking their keys up at 
noon on Thursday and now they know that that's not going to happen so they tend to bolt backwards from it and try and I I know it happens I wish it didn't happen but the lemonade car show brought to you by Omvic Ontario's motor vehicle sales regulator returns after this short break when we come back we'll be taking your calls 800-968-7836